All right, so now that I've talked about um, the arrangement of flagella, I want to talk about rotary flagella and what they do. And I said before that they enable the movement and what this process known as chemiotaxis. Okay, so bacteria and archaea that are able to move generally swim by means of rotary flagella. And flagella are hel helical propellers that drive the cell forward. And this is really interesting because in living systems, we do not see a lot of rotary motor type proteins. Okay, this is one of the few examples. You might be able to think of the other example, but I'll just tell you right now what it is. It's ATP synthase. Okay, in ATP synthase, we see another rotary um, protein that kind of in it drives the process of ADP, um, phosphorylation of ADP to make ATP. But this is one of the other examples, and it occurs in such a primitive type of organism. Bacteria, microbes have been around for a very, very long time, much longer than any multicellular animals or anything like that have been. And um, so this is kind of an interesting um, fact. Anyway, I want to talk about this chemiotaxis um, process. So these flagellated cells, okay, have elaborate sensory systems, and that's to be expected, okay, because you have to have a way of detecting your environment. And the reason you need to be able to de detect your environment is you need to be able to move, to go from place to place, location to location, okay? So flagellated cells have elaborate sensory systems, and that's essentially what allows them to move toward attractants. And in the case of attractants, we're usually talking about food sources or favorable environments, you know, temperature ranges, etc., um, salinity, whatever, um, and away from inferior environments. In a lot of cases, um, after, you know, kind of using an environment for a, a prolonged period of time, what we see is that, um, what we see is that, waste products build up, okay? And the bacteria need to eventually be able to get away from those waste products or they'll be killed by them. So the sensory system is called chemiotaxis, okay? That's what the sensory system is called. So directed movement towards a favorable environment. So it essentially is what it does. And that's what I kind of want to point out. It directs movement towards a favorable environment. So essentially what happens when you're moving towards an attractant. So when a cell is moving towards an attractant, or swimming towards an attractant, um, the flagella rotate in a counterclockwise direction. So that's kind of important. The flagella rotate in a counterclockwise direction. And the bacteria is said to run, okay? And, and run just means it's moving smoothly. It's swimming in a smooth manner towards the attractant. You know, it's not, it doesn't look awkward in its motion. And when the cell is swimming away from a non-favorable environment, okay, receptors send a signal that allows one or more flagella to switch their rotation. And they want to switch their rotation from counterclockwise, you know, the fav towards the favorable environment, to counterclockwise. And when they do this, they look sort of awkward, and they're said to tumble, okay? The, they call it tumbling instead of, instead of running, okay? So they can so so this is sort of the basic process of the on and off. Now you might be wondering how this works, like how this sort of switch go, comes about. And the and the bottom line is that the flagella switch from clockwise to counterclockwise rotation by you know a phosphorylation cascade. Okay, very similar to any other channel uh, protein channel opening. You know, a phosphate from ADP phosphorylates the channel, induces a conformational change. Okay, so you need a conformational change, some sort of change to go from clockwise to counterclockwise and vice versa. So that's kind of the process, a kind of a general overview of uh, chemiotaxis.